welcome to day two of the kid at the back this is a yandere visual novel slash dating sim in which you meet sol the guy who attends the same art class as you you think you guys have just met but he seems to have had his eyes on you for quite some time let's get started i'm so excited for day two and this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me the one who loves i was a child she was a child in this kingdom by the sea day two the kingdom. The sun setting by the horizon colors the grassy field into a deep golden orange as the wind made some strands of hair brush across your face. Your ever beloved home, the tall grass, the fresh air, the various farm animals that you and your family raised since you were but a mere child. You can't even imagine what was happening before you right now as a group of people came while they talked with your father. Your only family member left. Oh no, wait, I have a bad feeling about this. You see the distress in your father's eyes as he tries his best to negotiate with the people before him. The desperation in his voice, the sweat running down his neck as he moves around his hand gesturing this and that. Please, just give me more time, I promise I can pay up. This is all we have left, I don't know where to go if we lose this farmland. We've given you enough chances already Mr. Winterborn. If you don't pay up your debt, we'll take your land. A loud ringing of the school bell rang across the hallway making you jerk out of your thoughts. Students came out through their classroom doors. You feel someone shaking you awake. You sat up and met face to face with Crow. Well good morning sleeping beauty. Crow is so cute. You let out a yawn. You rub your eyes as you looked around. Your fellow classmates are now gone from their seats as it is now lunchtime. What did I miss? Nothing important. Though, if you're having doubts I can lend you my notes afterwards. Thanks Crow, you're a lifesaver. Anything for you, you need? <laughs> You recall the little dream you had. You quickly shake it off as you let out a stretch, popping a few joints before you got up and went out of your classroom with Crow and Toe. You meet up with your group of friends, seeing Daryl with Geo and Crow waiting by the lockers, Brittany coming along behind them, and Jess. You wave at them. Oh, Geo is so pretty. I don't like how I'm blocking Geo's face though. I don't know if I can move myself to the bottom corner maybe? Cause that'll be like the least intrusive. Good noon to you all. Regards, Daryl. How was class? Boring and boring. So glad to be out of there. One more useless minor and I'll be out of here. Gio just shrugged, a hand in his hoodie pocket, while the other on his phone. We got to at least do something in our major today though, which I'm glad about. More papers, but at least it was something. Enough about papers, so about the Halloween party. Any ideas for a costume yet? As they talked with one another, at the corner of your eye you noticed a familiar figure. Is it my boyfriend? Oh yay! He came out of a classroom and another person came afterwards behind him, seemingly bored out of his mind. I'm gonna go join Sol. Oh, um, bro, is it okay if I leave? I have, I have somewhere to be at. Is that so? There's a slight disappointment in his voice, but he lets you continue on. Yeah, sorry I couldn't hang out. Nonsense. I'll see you after lunch instead then you need. If ever you're interested, of course. Of course! You give Crow one last smile before going over to where Sol is. You walk over to the two individuals. They seem to be in a deep conversation. However, Sol notices your presence and stops talking. His attention now on you. His companion noticed a change in Sol's demeanor and followed his gaze as it lands on you. The shorter male greets you with a smile. Hi there! You friends with Sunny? Sunny? Sunny! And he gave Sol a pat on the back with a smile on his face. Sol was unamused as he tried his best to hide his red face behind his hands. Because he's such a sunshine. He's sunny. You giggle, looking over to Sol, his bright red face covered by his hand while looking away. Like a nickname? Yeah. Sonny loves the nickname I gave him. Right, Sonny? Sol didn't say anything. He just looked away and refused to meet your gaze. <laughs> it's adorable. Hugo was a bit silent. He appeared to be analyzing your face, his head tilting slightly to the side before a smile appears. You shall have taste, Sonny. She is very pretty, like you said. <laughs> Sol just gave him a dark look telling him not to even try to go there. A blush escapes your cheeks at the gesture. Anyway, nice to meet you. My name's Hugo. I'm Sol's friend. Yinny, a uh, pleasure to meet you too. He shakes your hand with a smile on his face. So, anyway, what are you up to, Yinny? Oh, I just saw you both and I wanted to greet you. Anyway, we were planning to go to the rooftop today and eat lunch there. The weather's doing better unlike yesterday. You wanna tag along with us, Yinny? You guys aren't a fan of the cafeteria? Upon mentioning the cafeteria, Sol shivered as Hugo only gave a small chuckle. Sunny isn't a huge fan of the noise there. I heard there was a food fight that happened yesterday. Right? Though, so, not gonna lie, a food fight sounds fun. What are you, high school? <laughs> At least have a little bit of fun, Sunny. Anyway, enough talking. Let's get going, shall we? Sure. Hugo walked to his usual spot and got himself seated on a bench that you somehow never saw before. Sol followed, a large wrapped box in his hands that caught your interest. I will sit beside Sol. Sol noticed you from the corner of his eye, the edges of his lips going upwards. Aww. He pointed to the box nestled in Sol's hands. Is that your lunch, Sol? He can say that. As Sol unwrapped the cloth, 
and show you three bento boxes. He takes out the first bento box on top before giving the other one to Hugo. Hugo happily accepted the box, uttering a small thank you to Sol before taking out his chopsticks. Hugo opens the container and lets out an awed sound. His eyes sparkling, drool slowly drops down at the corner of his lips. You actually listened and- Wait, does Sol know how to cook? That's so good. Did you cut these tiny sausages into octopuses? Keep your voice down, it's ringing in my ear. Wait, I need to take a picture of it. Hugo gently placed the bento on his lap before rummaging through his phone. He flipped it horizontally and opened his phone's camera. A small click of the camera sound was heard before he placed it back down. Hugo took the container back into his hands, but not before turning to you and showing what he keeps gushing about. Oh my! Oh, look at it! Isn't it adorable, Yuri? There's like a rice shape like a bunny and the octopus sausages and some veggies and tofu and like sushi and also the little stars and the mushrooms. I've never received a bento before, can I have one? There you see, a various ranges of food with rice shaped to match a moth. It's a moth? That's so cute. Seaweed to design the face, along with using cabbage leaf to form its wings. Right below the moth are mini sausages shaped like octopus. Wonderfully cut carrots that were made to look like stars and squeezed beside stuffed shiitake mushrooms. The egg roll sushi and broccoli with melted cheese as a dip look delicious. I almost feel too bad to eat it. Itadakimasu! Without wasting another second, Hugo started digging in. Did you make this by yourself, Sol? You can say that. Sol answered, opening his own container. Within it was just a regular ham and cheese sandwich. He took out one piece, but before he could take a bite, he turned to you. Have you eaten any? No, I haven't actually. Sol's eyes went wide and Hugo gave you a look. Before you knew it, Sol took out another box. The last bento box before giving it to you. Oh wait, I don't want to take his food. You can have this. It's an extra. Why do you have an extra? I didn't like how this looked, and I figured I could let Hugo finish it. It's a waste of ingredients. Uh, you don't have to, Sol, really. No, I insist. Oh, for fuck's sake, just eat the same box. And Hugo clearly had enough of the back and forth banter, suggested before continuing on his box. Sol hesitated at first. He eventually took out a spoon and fork and handed one out to you. Oh, I want to tease him. He declined his offer of the utensils, making him raise his brow in confusion. You don't want the spoon? Or... Do you prefer chopsticks? Nothing of the sort. And what is it? I want you to feed me. But <laughs> that nearly- <laughs> so cute! That nearly took Sol out. Ego gave you a side eye. A judgmental look on his face as he stopped eating. He scooted- <laughs> He scooted- <laughs> Look at the moon. He scooted a bit away from the two of you before returning to his meal. Sol, however, was nervous for a bit. His eyes still transfixed on yours. Still couldn't believe what he just heard. Are you just gonna keep staring at her or what? Sh Shut up! I'll, I'll feed her. Sol gripped, <laughs> he's awake. Sol gripped the spoon in his hand, taking a few pieces from the bento box before turning to you. His eyes averted away from you. A wild blush on his face as he raised the spoon to your face. His hand was shaking a bit, seemingly nervous. Hey yo, Sol, maybe you could feed me something else later. <laughs> he took a bite and chewed. You felt the flavors mixing. It was delicious and fresh. It's amazing. So, this is really good. Hugo nodded along with you, food stuffed on one cheek like a hamster. I know, right? You'd honestly be surprised. So, you'd make a great house husband. Sol's eyes widened at your declaration. You really think so? I really do think so. <laughs> so, do you want to get married to me? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do. Zol is definitely house husband material, you need. He can cook, he can clean, he can do anything. I'd rather not be your own personal butler. That was a compliment. The two banter, but you couldn't help looking at Sol. His eyes have a hint of sparkle in it. It seemed brighter. Hugo eventually finished his own box, tucking away the box and wrapping it back up. Hugo stood up from the bench, stretched his limbs, walked a few steps ahead and looked back at the both of you. Is this what you guys do every day? You question, making Hugo turn to you. Or at least when you both get together? What do you mean? You mean Sol giving me lunch? He just keeps forgetting to bring his own. Hugo pouts. And you never finish yours, so I do the honors of ever finishing good food, thank you very much. Those bento box aren't. What inspired them if you don't mind me asking? Oh, you didn't know? Shut it, Gogo. Gogo? N oh, now we're using the nicknames now, Sunny. How sweet of you. You see here, Yiddy, my old pal here just makes food art like the typical artist that he is. But he never bothers to finish it, much less eat it. He really loves cute things like... Ego turned back to Sol. Sol just stared back at him, his arms crossed. What was the name of your plushed horse, Sonny? What the hell I'm answering that? Boo. He owns a plush horse. That's so cute. Sol owns plushies. 
By now, Sol's face is beet red as he ties the bento boxes back up. He stood up from his seat before going over to where Hugo was. You stood up as well, and followed along the duo. That's so cute, you keep surprising me more and more, Sol. He said nothing as he fixed his choker, the red going up to his ears at your compliment. Looks can be deceiving. This begs you to wonder, why do people never bother to notice him? Why don't people want to get to know him? Yeah, he's so cute, I would have noticed him. Maybe they just never gave him the chance because of how he looks. Not to mention his intimidating height. But his height is so... But if he's that tall, he can just pin me against the wall better, right? But in the end, he's just a gentle giant. By then, Hugo stopped talking, the wind picking up a bit as he went by the railings. He leaned in and placed his elbows on the cold iron surface as he looks down. Curious, you approach him and look down to where his attention was. And there, you see a group of unfamiliar people. They look so fancy. They look rich. Dangerous. It doesn't help that the adult with them, you're guessing a teacher, has an eye patch on his right eye. Hmm, wait, what's going on? High class mugs. Sol lets out a disgusted look at the group of well dressed students. He didn't spare them a second glance and went back to the bench. I wonder if he knows them. High class? Ah, uh, you, you don't know about the hierarchy, you need. Not that I'm aware of. This is the first time I've ever heard of it. How come I've never heard of or seen one of them throughout my school years here? Hugo made a low chuckle. His gaze still transfixed on the group below him. His eyes narrowed, just like Sol. Clearly doesn't like them either. I don't blame you. No one likes talking about them anyway. Oh, there's an animation. Look at that. Hi, class. He glares at the group below. The school building isn't actually the real thing. Wait, what? But the school map clearly says that the addresses. That's where they actually fool you. You might think you got it right. We're sorted based on our background. But no capitalism and nepotism. The real school building? Way farther than where we are. And the campus is 10 times bigger and better. They get proper classes, have better equipment. Everything's just better here. We only get the short end of the stick. The afterthought, if you will. If I have to guess, the well off are in the main building. That's right. Son of a dude, daughter of a businessman. Heck, as long as you're rich, you're in. Your chances for having better education rest there. If you're part of the high class, then you'll have a better chance of having a successful and stable life. But don't we have students here who are like, super rich? You remember Jess being one? She's the daughter of a businessman, but how come she's not part of the higher class? There are some who ended up shifted down and moved to our building. Either they failed a class or got a violation. They didn't want that type of stain on their reputation, so they sent them here. Of course, some didn't appreciate that. They see us as someone lower than them, hence Hugo looks at Sol. The said man too busy sketching on his sketchpad to notice. Oh, they have to fight the weak to feel something, huh? They sound like nothing but bullies. How come someone didn't step up to complain? Hugo, however, just laughed at you as if you told him a very funny joke before shaking his head. If only it was that easy. His laugh eventually died down as he scratches his head. Actually, Uni, in this city, no one really gives a shit. Money's the only thing revolving around this city. Aww. You got no cash? You're done for. Which is why people like us, he looks at you, are desperate to get into the higher class. If you say dare complain, he paused as if contemplating the words he's about to say. Judging from his entire demeanor, it's not good. Instead, he sends you a look. His once soft sky blue eyes are now sharp like icicles piercing down on you. You're better off dead. Hugo glanced one last time below. The group of high class students are now gone before averting his gaze on somewhere else. He lets out a sigh. But that's a sad reality here. The attention is good, great even. Your chances to get a stable life and even have a knock to stardom is high. Once you're part of the high class, much less graduate there. About the hierarchy. How come I never heard of the hierarchy before? It's like a hidden thing. But that's what we call it. This school? No. This entire city. It's like a fighting pit. Whoever's the most powerful has a better chance in living a good life here. People come to the school to get a second chance in life, but to achieve that, you have to make yourself well known. Make them think you're worth their time. If not, you're on your own. I have nothing else to ask. The city is corrupted, he muttered under his breath. Which makes me question, Yuni. How are you able to get in the city? No. Oh. Better question is, why did you enroll in the school? If you don't mind me asking, that is. You're clearly not from here. And that he was right. Your eyes widen at the words that the well-dressed man said. No, I refuse. Yuni, I thought I told you to stay inside. You're not taking this farm. My home. You cut your father's words off, marching towards the tall man with loud and heavy footsteps. The tall man, however, raises a brow at you, raising his hand to hold his men. His deep magenta eyes then turn to look straight into you. It sends a chill down your spine. Well then, how about this? If you manage to pay off your debt for the next five years, I'll let you off the hook and let you keep your land. Five years? You can handle that. Maybe working three jobs would do it for you. Uh-uh. He tutted, waving a finger in front of your face. 
He looks down at you, reminding you of your place. A mischievous smile appears on his handsome features. But I have some conditions you have to meet. You went silent. Your heart starts pounding in your chest as you kept eye contact with his sharp magenta orbs. I want you to stay in the city. The city? But we can't even afford to take her to college. <laughs> what more the city? Your father interrupted. The man's eyes moved sideways to meet his, his figure is still next to you. No need to worry. She'll be under my jurisdiction, of course. I'll provide for her education and the place to stay. The tall man lets down the law, his head thrown a bit back as if he just heard a very funny joke. See, I'm not that cruel. His eyes return to you. However, in return, I want you to pay off your debt. I don't care what methods. A dark smile appears on his face. It sends a shiver down your spine. Legal or illegal. As long as you reach the amount. If not, well, you can say goodbye to your little farmland. He says that, but there was a gleam in his eyes that's telling you that's not all. But he did not elaborate any further. This guy sucks. He bit his lip. You turned to look at your father. His eyes were clearly telling you to decline. There was something about this man that just screams dangerous. But you're too desperate to not lose your home. Your only home. So, what do you say, Uni? The tall man's gaze still fixed on you. Waits for your answer. Do you accept? You recall the aftermath of your dream this morning. A sour look on your face as you bit your lip. Hugo takes notice of this. He pauses for a bit trying to read your gloomy expression. Let me guess. It's something you can't avoid. I honestly don't know. My father never really disclosed as to why we were in debt. But I was so desperate to not lose my only home. I need to make it up to the higher class no matter what. Free jobs isn't cutting off the way I want it to be. I'm running out of time. This is my last year in this cursed university and I'm barely making any progress. Hugo's eyes are still on you. He realized you haven't answered his question yet. My family owns a business. He finally speak, making Hugo perk his eyes up in curiosity. Mm, what sort of business does your family have? Oh, well, we own a few farms. Sounds nice. I'd love to be out of the city once in a while. Gave him a small smile. Yeah, <laughs> some might say it's boring, but it's not. You get to pet horses and cows. Well, you really should invite Sol over then, if ever. That guy loves horses. But that means you're a long way from home. Don't you miss it? A little bit. That's all right. Normal to feel a little homesick. I heard great things about the city, about the school. Hugo remained quiet, listening to you as you went on. If I can manage to come on top and maybe be a part of the higher class like you said, then maybe I can save my family's farm. Hugo's arms are now crossed. He didn't say anything as he looks at you. He lets out a chuckle. You remind me of her. Like, huh? Uh, oh, I'm rambling. Don't mind me. <laughs> I'm being caught red-handed. He waved his hands. His face, now as red as a cherry as it reaches his ears. Just then, you feel a presence behind you. Turning around, you're met with Sol. His glare is stingy and directed at Hugo. The shorter male, however, didn't mind. Probably used to it. It's almost time. We should head back. Alright, alright. With nothing else to do, the three of you left the rooftop. As you were walking down the stairs, however, you felt your foot slip off. You missed a step. Oh, is he gonna catch me? Hang on, I've got like a cat hair in my nose. Is he gonna catch me? Thankfully, Sol grabbed your waist ooh, before you could fall off the stairs as he steadies you. Oh, you alright there, Uni? Yeah, thank you, Sol. Be careful next time. Sheesh, the school needs bad architecture. Also one of the few floors here. The stairs are all wonky. It's also why it's forbidden to go up here. We're troublemakers, though. Hugo chuckled as he went down the stairs, watching his step as he did so. Sol's arm is still secured around your waist. Hehe. <laughs> and it seems like he isn't letting go until you're all on stable ground. Sol's arm can be around something else, eh yo? The sound of the bell ringing through the hallway echoes through, signaling the start of the next classes for some. Hugo groans. I don't want to go to class. I hate my history teacher as much as my archery coat. Why'd you skip that? Hugo's eyes pop open. It became bright like a light bulb just popped out on top of his head. Sol knows exactly what that look means. Don't tell me you're actually- I am going to skip class! How about it? Fuck the school. If they're gonna treat us badly, then let's be the bad guys. Hugo said with a mischievous look on his face. Sol just sighs. He then turns to look at you, seemingly waiting for your response. The thought of skipping is quite a gamble. Your next class is with Crow and Art History. But then again, your teacher will probably only do some boring ass introduction. Missing one wouldn't hurt, would it? Ah, uh, fuck it, we'll skip this one. He can let out a small cheer and gives you a thumbs up. Sol gives you a cheeky smile of his own. But how do we do that though? Obviously we can't go through the entrance since it's closed and guarded. I know a way. Without wasting more time, Sol leads the way going through the backside of the school near the gardens. The edges, of course, were barricaded by a tall iron fence. Sol finds a bush and pushes it aside, revealing a gaping hole. Well, that's quite convenient. Did you make this hole, Sol? He did. I did. Hugo went ahead first through the hole. Sol waits for you first before following right after. The three of you went past a few bushes and shrubs, 
leaves falling as you pass by them. The red and orange leaves scattering around and some making its way to your uniform before you all eventually made it out and met with pavement. So, where do we go? He goes off for a moment, looking around before pulling out his phone. Suddenly, he lets out a gasp, scrolling through his phone faster before gripping on Sol's shoulder, earning him a hiss from the taller male. Sherlock Holmes is out? My ears. Oh yeah, it's that detective movie I keep seeing on the television. I thought that wouldn't come out till next week. Did I set the date wrong? But that... Hugo started sprinting, leaving you and Sol behind. For the love of... Sol placed his hands on his hips before walking to where Hugo ran off as he followed. Hugo kept tapping away on his phone, his shoulders slumping. Guess he did get the date wrong. Shoving his phone back in his pocket, he turns to you and Sol. He clasps his hands together and pulls the biggest puppy eyes you've ever seen. We have got to watch it. Can we, Innie? Can we, Sonny? Hugo begged. You can go ahead and watch the movie. I'm gonna roam the arcade while you're at it. Hugo pouted. His eyes went half lidded and the sparkle in his eyes was gone. But it's more fun if you're around. I know you like those crime videos you watch from time to time, so please. Sol, however, facing off his expression, isn't in the mood. Hugo gives up and turns to you. How about you, Innie? Would you like to watch the movie with me? The ticket and food's on me, of course. I wanna go to the arcade. We'll watch the movie in like a different route. Hugo shrugs. Alright. Go on your little impromptu date then. Besides, I don't want a third wheel either way. D date? You're the one who decided we should skip class and do whatever we want. Yeah, and I want to watch a movie. Well, don't let me stop you two. Hugo stuck his tongue out at Sol and said mail, only rolls his eyes. Well, I'll be heading in now. I'll give you guys a call on where to meet. Sure. You and Hugo parted ways, and he gave you both a wave before heading in a different direction. Sol turns to you. Should we get going, Innie? Of course. The flashing neon lights of the arcade's exterior lights your way. The sound of each arcade machine reaching your ears. I've never been here before. Is this place new? Not really. It's just hidden within the city. I see, I see. Do you get out a lot, Sol? You seem to know places. I know places because I get my ass dragged by Hugo. Is that so? You just laugh. Sol shrugs as he shook his head. He takes out a few coins from his pocket before handing it to you. They were tokens. So, which one are you going for first? Well, he came in prepared, as always. Look at the little smirk on his face. He's so cute. Kicking my feet under the table. Oh, come on. Sol holds out his hand and you accept it. He held it tight with a light squeeze as you and him roam around the arcade. You and Sol went and played multiple arcade games, some you win and some he does, but you often get the feeling that he lets you win for the sake of you winning. Come on Sol, this is like the fifth time I won, there ain't no way you're this bad. Maybe you're just that good, you know. You flatter me. Just as when you're about to insert another coin, however, you realize you just ran out of tokens. Sol takes notice of this, of course, and gave out some of his to you. I'll go to the counter and grab a few more tokens. You don't mind staying here for a little bit, right? Oh, how much should I pay you for the tokens? It's on me. Don't worry about it. Wait here. He's so cute. I love him. I want him so bad. Giving you one last look, he hurriedly went to the counter. You look around the area. The dinging sounds from various machines fill the arcade. From the corner of your eye, you spot the claw machine. Maybe playing a few games wouldn't hurt. Going to the claw machine, you check the contents inside. A cat plushie, a Shiba Inu plushie, and a horse plushie. They all look so cute. Which one should I try to win? Let me think. Horse plush, horse plush. You remember how Sol likes horses? Maybe you can try and win one for him. These are his tokens after all. You took out some of the tokens Sol gave to you and inserted one into the coin slot. The machine whirs to life as you take the joystick on your left hand while hovering the red button on your right. You're focused, eyeing the claw in its position, trying to align it with the horse plush. The claw takes hold of the plush. Your eyes widen as you cross your fingers hoping it catches it, but you're interrupted with a sudden smack to your ass. Hey! My plushie! And my butt! You jerk and turn around. What the fuck? Well, well, well. What do we have here? You turn and met with a tall figure, a cocky smirk on his face. He looks well off, like those typical spoiled rich kids you see in movies. His hair a bit tussled with two men, you assume are his bodyguards beside him. He reeks of tobacco, making you gag. He said nothing but trying to move away from his sight, but you were stopped by another tall figure. You're guessing he's with this asshole. Now where do you think you're going, sweetheart? You alone? Yes, and I would pretty much prefer to be alone. The man, however, did not listen. Why don't you come with me, and I'll show you how these games are played. He raised his hand to reach your shoulders. Before he could touch you, however, he kicked him between the legs. He doubled over and clenched his lower region, a groan escaping his lips. Let's fucking go! His goons were taken aback and rushed to help him. Now's my chance. Don't let her get away. Multiple heavy footsteps were coming after you. You turn every corner you can, trying to make them lose you. A three against one is not a good matchup. Anyone, please, 
Someone help me! You pleaded, but the multiple sound effects and music from each machine within the arcade drowns your pleas. You curse under your breath as you focus on running. All you can think about at the moment is to get out. You manage to get out of the arcade, but you can still clearly hear the man and his goons on your trail. You look around and found a few toilet stalls. You rush towards it and got in the stall hurriedly opening and locking it as soon as you got in. The place stinks, but you didn't give it another thought as the beating of your heart rings through your ears. Tears filling up the corner of your eyes. You hear footsteps. Find her! A man's voice echoed. You try to think of something, and you thought of calling Sol. You quickly took out your phone. No signal. Are you for real right now? You can hear how aggressive they tore open each stall. They creep closer and closer to where you are. Anyone, please. There you are. Wait, no! No, please. You've been a very bad girl. But don't worry, you can make it up to me by doing me a favor. Fuck you and your favors. I've been kind to you, but it seems you want to do it the hard way. Oh no. Putting a trigger warning, you forcefully grabbed the edge of your uniform. Your eyes went wide as your fingers went cold. You quickly grab a hold of his wrist as you try to push him away. He's too strong. He forcefully lifts up your uniform, revealing your stomach to him. You're gonna give me a good time. Hey! Oh no! Boys, hold her down. No! Fuck off! Let me go! The tears that were hanging by finally fell down your cheeks as you tried to stop him from going any further. The two large men with him held you down as you try and struggle. But to no avail, your vision is slowly being blinded by the hot tears that were filling up. It's no use, it's too strong, and there's no one here to hear me. You close your eyes shut. Please just end quickly. <laughs> hey! Judging from the impact, the man's body was jerked off of you as he was thrown to the side. You hear flesh hitting flesh. And another one. I heard, I heard a bone crack. That's enough, Sol. Not yet. That's enough. You broke his nose already. No. Sol! That's enough! You need to help. The mention of your name, the familiar reddish-orange eyes went wide open before turning to you. Sol quickly went to your side, eyes wide with shock before crouching down and giving you a hug, his shoulders shaking as he embraces you. You said nothing, however, too stunned to speak to what transpired before you. The man now lay still on the ground, a pool of blood seeping out of him. The rest of his goons passed out in a random corner. You look up and met with the all-too-familiar eyes of Hugo, but they weren't the kind ones you usually see on his face. Hugo's eyes twitched as he sighed, trying to hide his visible irritation, but failing. He looks around at the mess Sol made before turning to check up on you. He said nothing, hands in his pocket, as he looks down at you in Sol's embrace. It's getting quite late. We should head home. Hugo taps sh Sol's shoulder, making the tall man bury his face further in between your neck before eventually letting go. Oh, look at his face. <laughs> I love him so much. My sweet baby. His eyes were bloodshot, his face red from either anger or worry, like you aren't sure. But one thing's for sure is that this man before you cried. He cried for you. Look at this cute little doll, my poor baby. But I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have left you. I so thank you for saving me. No, I can't. No! <clears throat> my poor soft sweet bub. I reach out to cup his cheek, and he flinches at the touch. Tears that he was trying to hold back are now flowing freely down his cheeks. God. He eventually relaxed as he closed his eyes and leaned onto your hand as he held it. I don't, I don't know what I'll do if... It's okay. It's alright. Yeah. Beside you, Hugo extended his hand for you to take. You notice his other hand is the same horse plush you tried to win back at the crane game. He took Hugo's hand as he helped you get up. Sol stands as well but backs away from you a few steps. We should head back home. It's quite late after all. Both you and Sol don't say anything but you nod along. Hugo gives you both a smile before walking away. Sol kept a firm hold of your hand, seemingly afraid to let you go. Hugo lets out a sigh. I guess we can't get in an arcade anymore. Those guys might come back to teach us a lesson. If they ever come back, I'll give them more than just a broken nose. You're pretty scary right now, Sol. Good. I'd like to keep it that way. That's kinda hot. <laughs> I mean, that's very hot. Hugo shakes his head. He rummages through his pockets before handing Sol something. He didn't quite see what it was, but judging on the scowl on Sol's face, he doesn't like it. I told you these don't work anymore. It's because you aren't taking it, you fool. Now take it tonight. Sol grumbled like a child who got scolded before taking whatever Hugo gave to him and tucked it in his pockets. Anyway, your place is just around this corner. You should head back as soon as possible. I'll be taking Yinny home. Sol's eyes narrowed from holding your hand to wrapping his arm around yours in a possessive hold as he leaned closer while still glaring at Hugo. No. I can walk her home. Clearly, you're not in a good condition to fight again. I can fight again. There was something in Hugo's eyes that made your blood cold. The usual happy-go-lucky expression he had on his face was gone. Looking back at Sol, he seems unfazed at it, as if challenging him. It, Hugo's right. Sol, you look beaten up. But, but Yinny, at least she knows her limits. Sol says nothing but clenches his fist. You notice a few red marks on his knuckles. Your eyes furrow. I'm fine, Yinny. Sol tries to reassure you. 
You shook your head, no. Well, for me, you aren't. But he looks so sad. You look up and give him a reassuring smile. I'll be fine, Sol. Besides, I have Hugo to keep me safe. You go home first and get some rest. Oh, my poor baby. All right. Oh, Sol, wait, before you go. He pauses in his tracks. He raised his brows in curiosity. Holding the stuffed toy horse in your arms, you gently handed over to him, catching him by surprise. Sol, however, shook his head no and gave the horse back to you. His hands wrapped around your hands as you hold the toy horse. You won that. Plus, I don't deserve it. Not after that. But I want it for you. Consider this as your reward for saving me. Sol stares at you in disbelief. <laughs> I want to hold him so badly. Sol stares at you in disbelief. From your face to the stuffed horse in your hands. His hands were shaking as he takes the toy horse from your hands, brushing your fingers, making him shiver. I'll take care of it, Uni. I swear to you. You squeezed your hands, too hesitant to let you go. The voice hold eventually slips as he lets go. With that, Sol takes his leave. He walks backwards, his eyes still on you, making sure you're in his sight before properly walking front. Hugo sighs and you turn to face him. Well, ain't he a charmer? Is it working? You raise a brow at his question. Working what? Charming you, obviously. Don't worry, this is a secret between you and me. I do like getting to hang out with Hugo a bit more though. He says with a finger on his lips and a wink. You blush. He's nice. I own my life after that. And? And? You chuckle, thinking about the long-haired male. He is handsome. I'll admit that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Puts up that smirk on your face. Oh, nothing. Before you could retaliate with a question, his gaze softens, taking you a bit aback as you look down at the pavement below, kicking a pebble. Have you ever liked someone, Uni? <laughs> What's with this sudden question? Just answer. He paused as you thought for a second, and the first person that appeared in your mind was... That's a dangerous choice right there. Let's go with this one. You thought of Sol, how he protected you, how he didn't hesitate to beat those guys down, the pure terror in his eyes, how worried he was. You couldn't get it out of your head. He'd been an amazing friend. Even if he did beat up those guys, non-stop. It, is it a red flag? Maybe. Do you care? Maybe not. Damn, be red to filth here. <laughs> a smile made its way to your face, and it was enough of a confirmation for Hugo. Eventually, you arrive at the door of your apartment. You thank Hugo for accompanying you. He gives you a smile, rubbing the back of his head. I'll see you tomorrow, Yuni. Sorry the day didn't go well. It's okay, Hugo, but we can have a proper plan next time. Of course. Hugo nodded. He turned his heel, his back facing you, ready to leave. But he remained still on the spot. Yuni, wait, what's happening? Yes? Be careful walking late at night, okay? You pause, turning your head slightly at him. There's been multiple cases of missing people lately. I suggest you go home with someone. Anyone. Just don't go alone. Alright? Uh, I understand. Missing people, when did that happen? No, when did it start? Oh, and one last thing, Yuni. He turned his head around. As he looks at your confused face, his eyes soft, but the light against him seems like he's giving you a warning. Take care of soul for me, okay? What's going on? This is really suspicious. Ego, what are you doing? And with that, he left. Speaking of Hugo, Hugo my lizard is climbing a cactus again. Oh my god. You enter your apartment, the lights dim as you groan, searching for the light switch. Much better. You nod in approval before heading to your kitchen. You open your fridge and start rummaging around for something to eat. You sigh, as nothing good besides the leftovers from yesterday's dinner. You shrug, deciding to heat this one up after you set your things down. You don't really feel like cooking or ordering either. You sigh as you close the door to your fridge and you make your way to your room. You place your school bag near your desk as you take your seat. Skimming through the notes you've taken for the day. You click your tongue as you tap your blank notebook with the tip of your pen, going on with your silent staring contest with the blank paper before you let out a groan. Deciding to work later, you close your notebook and stand up. You turn to your window, noticing it slightly ajar. That's weird, I thought I'd close this. You went near to shut it, but was met with a now broken lock. You cursed. I thought I already replaced this two days ago. Maybe I shouldn't buy my locks online. You let out a groan as you left it alone and went out of your room and into your living room. Your TV blared as you munched some leftovers from the fridge, a movie currently playing as you kept your eyes on the protagonist. If you recall correctly, it's one of those films Jess keeps talking about, starring her favourite lead actor. You kinda get what she was gushing about. The lead does look attractive, and blonde wavy hair with sharp eyes as pink as fuchsia, and you still can't remember the actor's name. You took out your phone as you start to search up the name of the actor, but it suddenly changes and instead of a blonde actor on the screen, a report comes instead with a banner below. Another missing person case. Is this what Hugo was talking about? A shiver went up your spine, remembering the broken lock of your window back in your bedroom. Nuh-uh. Not tonight, Yuni. No scary thoughts for tonight. 
Turning off the TV, you went to your kitchen to grab something to drink. Then worried. You open your fridge, feeling the cold air hitting your face as you rummage through, taking out a pitcher of orange juice. You take a glass from your cupboard as you pour the juice to the last drop, taking a sip from it. You check the clock on the wall. 9.30pm. That late already, huh? You check the front door and windows, seeing everything locked before grabbing your glass and finishing the last drops of orange juice before heading back to your bedroom. Now dressed in your nightwear, you let out one last stretch, a yawn escaping from your mouth. Getting in your bed sheets, you lay there in comfort. Today was a lot, you thought. Another yawn escaped your lips. You must be really tired though, your eyes going half livid. And eventually, sleep took over. The moon was still high up in the sky. The night is quiet, save for a few late night cars. But that is not enough to wake the sleeping residents. Hmm? Why is Sol in my room? What's going on? Still broken, huh? You should be careful, Pumpkin. Clad in all black with a mask of the same colour adorning his face, he slowly makes his way next to the sleeping figure. His reddish eyes bright, filled with adoring love. He reached out and strokes a finger against his beloved's cheek. Look at my sleepy sweetheart. Makes me wonder who supplies Hugo with those sleeping pills. Wait, what? What do you, what do you mean? He lets out a low chuckle as he leans in closer to Yinny. Pulling down his mask, he leans forward, checking her face before continuing. He buries his face at the dip of her shoulders as he leaves a peck. Does Hugo know? Or is or is this just like something Hugo gives to Sol to help him sleep and Sol's been using it on us? He takes a deep inhale. He shakes, as if he took a whiff of a dangerous and addictive drug. He's so cute though, but what the hell is going on? What do you mean? No! <laughs> so this is bad behaviour, you can't do this. If you want to come over and maybe f*** you should, listen, you should just say so. His eyes bright as he examines every feature of his soulmate's face, as he gives Yinny's cheek a kiss. Fuck, oh, it smells so good. Pardon me. He lifts her arm and watches as it flops down, deep in sleep like Sleeping Beauty. He nibbles her neck earning him a soft whimper from the sleeping individual. So this is not good. You should just tell me. I would have invited you over and just lay on lay on the bed and be like, yeah, have at it. He just chuckled. Quite ticklish, aren't you? And he kept going. He kissed and lapped on the same spot to the point a mark started to form. His filthy scum think they could touch you. His eyes slanted in anger. His grip on the edge of the bed tightens as he wrinkles the sheets. His breathing, heavy. Your mind, no one else. You belong to me. If I ever see those bastards again, I'll kill them. <laughs> it's so hard to reconcile with how sweet Sol is and then with this. Tucking a loose strand away from her face, he gives her a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Yinny's lips. A shiver ran down his spine at the contact, and as much as he would like to stay a bit longer, his time is due. He backs away as he covers his face once again with his face mask. He walks towards the ajar window, turning back one last time. Sorry about your window, pumpkin. I'll make it up to you someday. He carefully opens the window again, and with that, he's gone. That was insane! <laughs> well, at least we finished this route. We're gonna go back and explore some of the other ones, but that is so good. I, oh my god, I loved getting to know Hugo better. Alright, let's load up some of the alternate routes. Okay, so we're back here. This is where we skip classes and go to the arcade. What if we choose not to? Although the idea of skipping seems thrilling, you can't afford to skip this one. Who knows what important projects your teacher is going to throw at you and you're going to end up behind just because of skipping one class. Thank you for the offer, you two, but I can't afford to miss this one. Ego's shoulder slumped down quite disappointed. That's alright, maybe we can hang out next time then. Sol turns to you. Would you like me to accompany you to your next class? Of course. I appreciate that, Sol. I'll see you at the usual spot, Sol. Sol nods at Hugo before said Mayo walks away, waving off as he leaves. You and Sol walk through the hallway towards your next classroom. You couldn't help but check on Sol. He seems nervous. You look down and see that his hand is shaking. Take his hand. Reaching to his hand, you gently wrap your hand around his. His hand stopped shaking but he went stiff before he eventually relaxed and intertwined his fingers with yours. This makes you smile. The walk was silent but no words needed to be said to see the growing smile on his face. You finally reach the front of your classroom door. You peek inside through the door's window and saw Crow on his usual seat already. You turn your attention back to Sol. Thank you for escorting me to my class, Sol. Oh, it's not a problem. His tiny smile didn't last long, however. His shoulders slumped down. No, I could have wished you could have come with us. Maybe next time, Sol. Maybe we can hang out on the weekend or on a free schedule. Sure. His words contradict his expression as it lacks enthusiasm. Uh-oh. Your son. The door to your classroom opens, and there you met eyes with Crow. Crow's eyes light up once he sees you. There you are, Yinny, just in time for the next club. Oh? Oh no, this is the first time I think they've actually met face to face. He was about to greet you, but felt Sol's presence beside him. And who might this fellow be? A classmate of yours? You can say that. Crow, this is Sol. 
He's from my art class, so this is Crow. Pleasure to meet you, Sol. Crow extends his hand out for Sol to shake. Sol just stared at it. A few awkward seconds passed by before he eventually took Crow's hand. Sol, however, wasn't regulating his strength as he gripped Crow's hand with much force. Crow winced from the pressure but didn't say anything before Sol eventually let go of his hand. Sol then turned to you. I should get going now, Yuni. I'll see you soon. I wish you could have come with. He sighed, reaching out to tuck a loose strand of hair away from your face, earning him a small blush from you. Sol turned on his heel and walked off. You looked at his retreating figure before Crow eventually tapped your shoulder. We should get going. With one last glance at Sol's retreating figure, you turn around and got inside your classroom. You got to your usual seat. Crow takes his usual seat by the window in front of your own, waiting for the classroom to settle down as your professor comes in. Alright class, settle down. You all better turn in this upcoming paper if you don't want to end up having no grades in your card. And that means your professor slams down his thin notebook, a loud slap echoing through the room. You all aren't able to graduate, much less make it to the higher class. Now, I'd like you all to think of a short story based on any type of literature. Bonus points if you can source out where you got your inspiration, along with references. I'll be checking those the most. You hear a few whispers from a few of your classmates as they talk with each other. Unfortunately for them, your professor notices them as he slams his thin notebook again on his desk, making some of you jolt in your seats. Now, I can allow you all to head to the library to do your research or stay here and brainstorm. You may begin. Crow stands up from his seat, gathering his things and turning to you. I'm going to the library. Would you like to join me? You perk up and nod. Crow waits for you as you gather your things before leaving the classroom into the library. The library, as of the moment, has less students. Some doing their research like you and Crow, and some just minding their own business. I'll go find us a table. The usual place, please. Of course. He says with a small smile as he sets his eyes on the table near the large windows. Your usual spot and your favourite in this library. While Crow went to your usual table, you on the other hand went near the tall bookshelves, checking each spine to see if something might catch your interest. You've been going through the spines and spines of books but nothing ever caught your eye. You eventually gave up and picked the closest book near you. It was a bit heavy. The biography of Marie Antoinette. Your eyebrows raised in curiosity. You knew a random book would do the trick. You flip it open and were met with a very well drawn of a very prestigious looking woman. Flipping through more of the pages, your eyes land on a drawn figure of the same woman, but her knelt before a guillotine. Quite a spoiler, but you read through the text below the illustration. The execution. Such a gruesome end, you thought. Deciding with this book, you tuck it under your arm. You take one last look around the bookshelves, maybe finding something of the same genre. You notice a peculiar book sticking out at the very edge of the bookshelf. It was a bit worn out and dirty. You're kind of wondering how it ended up there. You inch a bit closer to it. The spine didn't have anything on it besides a few worn edges. You got on your tiptoes as you reach out and grab the book. However, the moment you grab it and pull out the bookshelf, it started wobbling. You immediately stopped. If I keep prying it, will I just get crushed or will Crow come and save me? With determination, you held onto the shelf, making sure not to make it wobble any further as you take a firm grip on the worn book. Here. You? I got it! Whoa! The bookshelf shook a bit. You extended your arms as you tried to rebalance it. A few books fell here and there making you wince. But no one heard that. Anyway, what is this? It's so stuck to the damn thing. You flip open the cover, only to see a blank page. No author whatsoever. Save for the paper. The edges of it are a bit yellow from age. Dust isn't helping either. You flip a few more pages and then you finally get to see some printed words on it. The various torture devices and executions of medieval times. How the fuck did this end up here in the school library? And again, I might be able to get some material out of this. You shrugged, closing the book, you tuck it under your arm and left the area, going to where Crow was. Oh, there you are, Yinny. Have you found anything useful for your paper? It took a while. Nothing caught my eyes from the books but this one. You raise a large book and show it to Crow. The queen herself. That's pretty interesting. What kind of paper are you going to make out of it? I was thinking maybe about how a tyrant royal turned good but was punished regardless for her actions. How's that sound? Crow was silent for a few seconds, making you tilt your head. Maybe he didn't hear you correctly. You okay there, Crow? Is it not a good idea? That actually sounds nice, Yuni. Wait, is there something wrong with Crow as well? Can I ask what's the inspiration? Oh, I just thought about something today. About something you remember your conversation with Hugo back at the rooftop. Also, maybe I could get some extra points from the professor. He said with a wink and a nudge, and Crow just chuckles. Is that so? It's very smart thinking of you, Yuni. Why, thank you. He said with a bow, making Crow chuckle at your actions before you both settle down on the chairs from your table. You skim through the book, taking a few notes then and there for important bits you could use. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, Crow. Crow's been confirmed as the second love interest. And I'm so happy. 
the corner of your eye, you notice how Crow's eyebrows tend to furrow as he goes through his books. His leg is shaking underneath the table. His figure leans a bit forward as he rubs his temple. You notice how he keeps tapping the tip of his pen on his paper, but not writing anything. He seems restless about something. Tap his shoulder. Crow jolts in surprise, his eyes wide open. His leg stops shaking as he turns his full attention to you. Yes? Is something the matter you need? Are you alright, bro? Yes. I'm alright. What makes you say that? You seem stressed. Let me guess. Writer's block? You can say that. Bro lets out a nervous laugh. Bro pauses, his eyes averted from yours, refusing to look at them directly. His silence is deafening. It's making your heart race from nervousness. Do you think the Queen was a good person, Yumi? Huh? His sudden question caught you by surprise. My thoughts about Marie Antoinette. I read a few textbooks and documentaries. Each have different views about her, both negative and positive. But I'd like to hear it from you, since this is your source of reference. His sudden interest about the paper confused you. Does it have to do with something about the queen herself or the situation? Either way, you thought about his question. Oh god, I don't know enough about Marie Antoinette. I think I'm gonna choose this one first. I believe she was a nice person. What makes you say that? She did try her best to be charitable. And she was humble. People just misjudged her. If you think about it, she was just a child when she was made queen. Wouldn't you be overwhelmed by the sudden responsibility placed upon you? You're very much right about that. Thank you for your input, Yuni. For a moment, you saw a glint in Crow's eyes. A sign of relief. Relief from what? This is suspicious. Is it bad no one like something sus happens it makes them more interesting? Regardless, it seems to calm him down as he started writing on his paper again, going word after word. Well, at least you inspired him a bit. He smiled. What happens when we say she's terrible, though? She was ignorant. She raved while people were starving. Is that so? Quite rude to be partying around while thousands of people are dying from hunger, don't you think so? Bro was quiet, somehow waiting for more input from you. But once he sensed you weren't adding anything, his shoulders slumped. You're right. I'd be angry too. He didn't say anything else, returning back to his paper and slowly wrote on it while his hand went back to rub his temple. Okay, so he's just like, sad. If you do that, yeah, let's go back to go back to this one, because this is the route that we took before. You stretch out your arms, letting out a sigh of relief, looking at your paper that you made as you skimmed through it one last time. You were too caught up with your conversation with Crow, you nearly forgot about the worn book you brought along. You pick it up and start flipping through the first few pages. Torture devices. Execution devices. Why the fuck are you reading this again? You turn to another page and on it is a well sketch of a tall and bulky man. His face covered as he wields a large axe. His arms are filled with scars, while around his neck is a chained collar. It looks like those killers you often see in slasher films. Underneath the illustration, it reads, Executioner. Some executioners were feared by the public, while the rest respected them. But mostly, people shunned them for their field of work. The old time show were brutal. You mutter under your breath as you close the book and stack it on top of the other books you and Crow bought. You hand out your paper to Crow as he gladly accepts it, along with his own paper. Shall we get back? You nod along after finishing stacking the books you borrowed from the librarians or her assistants to take. I can't wait for the day to end. Same here. Crow chuckles as you and him leave the library. The day eventually came to an end. A few rays of the sunset shined through the hallways as you and Crow walked down. Do you have anything else to do today, Uni? Well, I have to do some quick grocery shopping before I go home. Ah, well in that case, would you mind me accompanying you? Really? It's fine if you don't, especially if you have other things to do. Like, look for Brittany and the others. Not really. Besides, Dale has after class practice. Same with Geo. As for Brittany and Jess, they're catching up on their business proposal. But don't you also need to catch up? I can do them tomorrow. I'd like to spend more time with you today, Uni. Aww, but what about Sol? He's gonna see. He's gonna be like, what the fuck is going on? Your voice got caught in your throat. You can feel how your face heated up. Stupid crows, stupid feelings. Uh, Alright then. Crow lets out a small cheer. You just giggle as you both went out of the campus. What if Crow's the one responsible for all the missing people? Oh my god! You share a few conversations with Crow along the way as he helped you with your little shopping, in which he brought a few things for himself as well during the trip back to your apartment. Before you knew it, you were faced with the front door. You frowned. Well, this is my stop. Thanks for coming along with me, Crow. You turned to face him with a smile, but disappeared upon meeting his blue eyes in the darkness of the night shown by the window behind him. Crow takes notice of your gloomy expression and gives your head a pat as he brushes through your locks. Then it went to your cheek, causing you to look up at him. Why the long face, Yuni? Well... We rarely get to spend time together like the old days. Today just reminded me of it. I sound so selfish. Forget it. You nervously laugh, averting your gaze away from him. Crow was quiet for a while, seemingly to think hard on your words before another smile broke through his face, his hand on your head coming to rest on your cheek. No, I agree. I'd love to spend an entire day with you. Even a month if you'd like. Oh, you're so spoiled, Crow. <laughs> just come to me and I'll put everything aside for you. <laughs> You stare at him in awe. You could barely believe what he just said. Do you... do you really mean that? 
I do. We can start by letting me walk you home after classes with you if you'd like. Don't hesitate to ask me again, okay? I'll see you tomorrow, Uni. Good night. Crow waves at you and you return it. Still awe-stricken at his little proposal. And with that, he's out. You press your palm to where your heart was, feeling the rapid beating of the damn organ. You enter your apartment, the lights dim as you groan, searching for the light switch. Much better. You nod in approval before heading to your kitchen. You set your groceries on your counter and start taking out its contents and arranging it in your cupboards and your fridge. Lifting your school bag back up, you went onto your room. You place your school bag near your desk as you take your seat. You click your tongue. I think that's bits the same. Yeah, so you like deal with the broken lock here. Let me see the actor here. Okay. A little bit of different dialogue here though. Another missing person case? The police are undertaking an investigation as of this moment for these missing people. So far, they don't have any leads and they're doing their best to search for them. For now, we advise everybody to come home early or be accompanied by another person. Now onto our next report. Is that why Crow was feeling uneasy? Maybe I should ask him to come home with me for the next day too. But the thing is, Crow lives in the opposite direction from where your apartment is. The thing he goes through lengths to protect you. You thank him tomorrow. For now, you turn off your TV. Then you get your orange juice and then you go to bed. And then Soul pops in. Yeah. Okay, so this is still the same as like the last one. So this is a little bit different from the one that you, we got before. Because if you spend the day with uh, Crow instead, um, this is what he says. And he kept going. He kissed and lapped on the same spot to the point a mark started to form. I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. I was hoping I would spend the entire day with you. He then lets out a growl. Instead, you went with that. That slug. He lets out a breath as he relaxes his grip. But not to worry, I'll make it up for our last time. When you're awake, of course. Tucking a loose strand away from her face, he gives her a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of her lips. A shiver ran down his spine at the contact. And as much as he would like to stay a bit longer, his time is due. He backs away as he covers his face again with his face mask. He walked back towards the window, turning back one last time. Sorry about your window, pumpkin. I'll make it up to you someday. He carefully opens the window again, and with that, he's gone. Oh boy. Let's load some of the other scenes. We've got two more CGs that we haven't gotten just yet. Back to the movie in the arcade. Let's see what happens when we go watch the movie with Hugo. Hugo gives you a bright smile. Heck yeah, I knew you were a trooper, Yinny. Come, let's grab some tickets and snacks. Do you want popcorn or something else? The shorter male went along ahead to the movie with you coming along, following up behind him. Soul clicks his tongue, shoves his hand in his pants pocket. As he follows along behind you, Hugo takes notes of this and raises a brow. Oh? I thought you weren't interested in the movie, Sunny Boy. Maybe you're right. It does look interesting. Stop making excuses, you just want to be with your sweet, sweet you. Let's go. Sol takes a hold of your wrist and drags you away from Hugo and to the movie theater. What? Hey! Come back here, I'm talking to you. Sol went ahead to the counter and bought tickets with just the three of you. He turns around and gives you a ticket. Your fingers brush with his, causing him to blush. Finally caught up to you two, Hugo pouted as he crossed his arms, looking at Sol. I thought the tickets were on you, Hugo. It is, but I guess it's on Sol now. Not that I'm complaining or anything, but this is supposed to be my treat. Oh well, the food's still on me. Wait right here. Hugo scurried off to the food booth, leaving you and Sol one last time. He walked towards the now showing picture, examining the poster. Sherlock Holmes, huh? He goes into detective movies. He turns to our Sol, and he places a hand on his hip as he checks the poster next to you. He can say that, he aspires to be one. That's quite charming of him. And Sherlock Holmes is his inspiration? It's just one of them. I see. How about you, Sol? What's your favorite genre? Sol raised his eyebrows at you and places a finger on his chin as he looks up, staring at the ceiling. I like supernatural horror and thriller. I like sci-fi horror, along with the tales of the Headless Horseman or those original fairy tales by the Grimm's Brothers. Uh, those all sound so gruesome. I bet you feel weirded out by it. What do you mean? I actually enjoy those as well. Really now? Of course I do. I think they're very interesting and I love the thrill they give. Sol stares at you in awe before a smile breaks out on his face. And maybe we could watch one together. I'm back! He goes familiar voice is heard. You turn around and saw him walking towards you, two large bags filled with popcorn on each arm and a large cup being held. Oh, let me, he said, taking one of the bags from Hugo's arm. And he thanks you for the help. I've got the snacks, hope you like popcorn, you need. He then turns to Sol. Come on, let's get in before the movie starts. Sol nods as you and Hugo follow him towards the entrance of the movie theater. He hands out the three tickets and then the three of you enter. This isn't it. The piece wants you to believe it's the ultimate evidence for this case when it's in fact. You were halfway through the movie, the bag of popcorn, half finished. You looked at the blue haired male on your left as his gaze transfixed on the large screen before you. Hugo, during the beginning of the film, was really giddy, 
But now he was silent, seemingly engrossed with the scene happening in the movie. His hand goes on autopilot as he munches on each bite of popcorn. To your right, Song, surprisingly, was also too engrossed with the movie before him. You need to piss. You've been holding it in for a while since you don't want to miss out on anything important. But Mother Nature is knocking so hard on your door. He taps Sol's shoulder. He turns his attention to you. You need something? I need to go to the comfort room. Would you like me to accompany you? No, it's fine. Just enjoy the movie. Sol gave you a nod. And you took it as a signal to stand up from your seat, ducking down and making sure not to block the screen for the viewers at the back as you sped walk towards the movie theater's comfort room. Jeez, it was already getting interesting too. I'll probably just ask Hugo what happened when I was gone. Well, time to head back. Uh oh. The forceful opening of the door startles you. A few grunts were heard and the shuffling of feet as if they were in a struggle. You went quiet. You better speak the fuck up or else. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. How many times do I have to tell you? Bullshit. Oh no! Wait, what's happening? Your eyes widen as your breathing stops. You quietly but quickly went to the nearest toilet stall. What's going on? A fight? In the cinema, of all places. Whatever's going on by the door is clearly something you don't want to get involved with. Just tell us who the traitor that you're in cahoots with, and I'll let you on. Again? I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Guess I have no choice. You hear the sound of the light bulb being popped along with the portion of the comfort room's light going dim. Only half of the room is now lit up. <laughs> Please, I don't know, I swear. I'm giving you one last chance, buddy. A little shuffling was heard. A rough voice seems to whisper something that you cannot hear. Then you hear breathing as it gets shorter and heavier. It, it, it is here. I swear, just look around, you're bound to find him here. Please don't kill me. Maybe the gun's too merciful. Oh! <clears throat> oh no. Your nose caught something. It stings as it fills the air, the edges of your eyes watering. Then you felt something wet hitting the tips of your shoes. You look down and your eyes widen. What? Oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. Someone just got killed, and the body's right in front of your stall. Hmm? Is someone else here? Shit, did he hear me? Well, well, well. Seems like we have a lost lamb on our shoulders. Then you hear the stall one block away from you was roughly open. Hmm, not here, huh? Come on, little lamb. Don't try to hide. Shit, I need to do something. You quickly look around trying to find a way to escape, but there's nothing but a small rectangular window just above the toilet. You could try to pry it open and call out for help. I feel like I'm getting closer to you. He's about to open my stall. What should I do? Oh god, that was scary. I didn't realize that was going to be like a time thing. Without much thought, you quickly step on the toilet seat and pry open the small rectangular window. It won't budge. Then you hear your stall opening, and there you see a tall man, roughly six foot eight. He's huge! He's dressed in all black, black leather gloves adorning his hands, and in one of them is a gun with a silencer attached to it. Below him is the bloody body of another man. That must be the meek voice man you heard. Well, hello there. You seem quite lost there. Sadly, I can't let any witnesses go loose. But please don't. He, however, did not listen to your pleas. He takes his gun as he loads it with a click. I'm gonna fucking die. Then you felt a hand coming to touch your hair. You flinch. You slowly back away, your legs shaking as you refuse to open your eyes, your arms still wrapped around you. Yinny, it's okay. And you hear that all too familiar voice. I'm here, Yinny. It's alright. Oh my fucking god, the bathroom looks like hell. Before you was Sol. Right behind him was Hugo. Both of their expressions filled with worry. But your focus was on the splattered blood across the walls. Hugo notices this and tries his best in blocking the view. He's so sweet. Sol's hand then went up to reach out to you, but he stopped midway, afraid as if he'll burn you. Without even thinking, you quickly wrap your arms around him, your shoulders shaking as you buried your face into his chest. Sol took this as a sign and gently wrapped his big arms around you, a hand coming to caress your hair trying to comfort you as you shook in his hold. Can we go out please? Without much of a word, Sol escorts you out from the scene before you. His hold tight and secured around your shoulders. Sol gives Hugo a look, and the shorter male just sighed, waving his friend away with a fanny motion. I'll take care of it. You and Sol left. Hugo lets out an irritated tisk as he looks down at the two bodies on the ground. God, what a pain in the ass. Is this is not the first time, is it? The sky is now dark, indicating it's near night. You finally got out of the movie. You look down and stared at your shoes, noticing a few splatters of blood. You grip Sol's arm. He took notice and looks down at your shoes. Seeing the blood, he kneels down on one knee and takes out his handkerchief. But no, it's alright. Doubt it. He wiped the blood on your shoes before folding his handkerchief and shoving it deep into his pocket. He looks at your disheveled look. Let me ask you again. 
Are you alright, Yinny? I'm- Let's be honest here. How and why? You asked no one. The terrifying experience kept repeating in your mind. Saul broke your trail of thought by placing his large hand on top of your head. You look up at him, and he gave you a soft, reassuring smile. His hand now off the top of your head. Don't think about it anymore. What matters is that you're here with me. You look around you, and notice that Hugo wasn't around. Where's Hugo? He's got it covered. You don't need to worry about him. How about I walk you home? Huh? It, you know, to keep you safe. I'll keep you company. I'll keep you safe. Do you trust me? I... I trust you. Now let me take care of you. Oh, he <laughs> Sol gently takes a hold of your hand and wraps it around his larger one. His gaze, never leaving yours, a bright smile on his face. Lead the way then. He felt safe. Safe with someone. Safe with Sol. The walk back to your apartment was quiet, save for a few nightly bugs making a few hums then and there. Sol's hand is still wrapped around yours. He's warm. You couldn't help but steal a few glances at Sol. He looks back at you. He said nothing. But the more he stared at you, the more longing his eyes were giving. Oh my gosh, look at him, he's so cute. I, I'm such a sucker for like heart pupils, like genuinely so, it's it's really cute. I know it's like a typical yandere type of thing, but like I, I really like it. He gives you another one of his bright smiles. He squeezes your hand and you squeeze back making him chuckle. What is it? Nothing. Your hand feels cold, let me fix that. He hummed as he raised the hand that he's holding. Oh my god. Sometimes he's so shy, and then sometimes he's just so smooth about it all. What? There. Now it feels warmer. He teased, a blush of his own appearing on his face. He's so cute. Oh my god. I, that's not how you warm hands up. Is that so? I'd love to see how you would do it. So! He just laughed at you, his face still red as he playfully hit his side. Eventually, your walk came to an end and you met with the front door of your apartment. You let go of the hand Sol was holding. He nearly reached out to keep a hold, but stopped himself. He turned to face him. Well, this is my place. Can I invite him inside? I'll see you tomorrow then. Why can't I invite him inside? Uh, of course. But we don't have classes together tomorrow though. That's alright, maybe we can hang out after class to continue on with the project. I'll keep your word for it then. You turn to face your apartment's front door, taking out your keys and finding the one you need. Before you insert the key to your apartment, you turn your head to look at Sol's tall figure still unmoving from his position. Thank you for today, I really owe you one. He paused, then his shoulders relaxed. Don't worry about it, just know you can count on me. Unlocking your front door, you fully turn to give Sol one last wave with a smile on your face. He returned with his own smile before walking off towards the exit. Okay, so this is all kind of basically the same. Yeah, I'm just going to do a little skip. I wonder if the ending scene is any different. Okay. So it's pretty much the same, but the dialogue uh, here is a bit different, given that you guys spent pretty much the whole day together. Our time today isn't enough. It's never enough. I want more of you. I want to be with you. Every waking day. His gaze went from hurt to desperate. His focus still on the figure sleeping before them. If only you know how much I crave your attention every day. It hurts. So please, let me. Tucking a loose strand away from her face, he gives her a kiss on the forehead before landing another one on the corner of Yuni's lips. A shiver runs down his spine at the contact. Yeah, and then the rest the rest of it's just the same. There's a bit with Hugo. And with that, he's gone. Yeah, there's a little bit with Hugo here. You really caused me some trouble today. Fucker. So it is you. I knew Hugo was sus. Fucking traitor. Hugo's the traitor he's looking for. What? My gun. Oh my god, he's so hot here though. <laughs> Look at him. He's, he's so hot here though. He <laughs> He's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? That sweet little doggy is biting their master's hand. I'm not gonna lie. We should have seen this coming. You're talking too much. I haven't even fired a gun since ages ago. It makes you think you can- <laughs> Shit. They're slowly figuring me out. I don't think I could make it for the next few days. Sunny, you've done enough for me, I think. This is the end of our deal. No, I like Hugo. He genuinely seems really sweet. What's gonna happen? No! That actually hurts me a little bit. I'm so worried about Hugo. I really, I really like him. Okay, so this is at the beginning. Like when we got to choose to join Sol, stay with the group, or call him over. Let's see what happens when we call him over. Without much thought, you walk over to where Sol is, so he almost immediately notices you. A smile appearing on his face. His companion notices change in attitude and turns to you. Hi hey there, your friends are Sunny? Sunny. Sunny. And he gives Sol a pat on the back. 
Okay, so this is kind of the same dialogue. Ah, there we go. So they've introduced themselves and the group's coming over. And then you hear a group of footsteps behind you. Hugo first notices the group behind you as he raises his head to meet one of their gaze. There you are, Yuni. You just ran up like that. I got worried. You with these people, Yuni? Oh, that's right. Uh, sorry for running off like that. Um, yeah. So, Hugo? Uh, these are my friends. You turn your body to face Crow and the others while your gaze is still fixed on the duo. Crow gives the two a smile and a small wave. Daryl came up first, extending his hand for one of the two to take. Real nice to meet you, I'm Daryl. If you haven't heard yet, I'm the ace of our school's football club. He said with a smile, and Higo took his hand with a shake. Pulling up is Brittany, and she just stares with a hand on her hip, while Jess was twiddling her fingers as she stuck close to Brittany's side. Hey, how's it going? She's so hot. Uh, uh, hello. Between Brittany and Jess and Daryl, it seems that only Daryl is the most enthusiastic out of all of them in this newfound friendship. I'm Hugo! I've heard about you, Daryl! It's nice to meet you! Thankfully, Hugo returned the same energy as the jock. I'm Jericho, but people call me Crow. Nice to meet your acquaintance. Crow also stuck his hand out for Sol to shake. However, Sol did not take it. There was a slight awkwardness in the air between the two males, making Crow slowly retrace his hand back. No way! The atmosphere between the two, however, was cut short when Hugo gave out a loud gasp as he marched towards Geo, who was way behind the group, a visible scowl on his face. Geo's eyes darkened as he tried to step back, but Hugo was quick on his feet as he engulfed the taller male into a hug. Saburo, Hisashi Buri! Bendoksai. Eh? I didn't want to see your ugly face the entire day. No, the entire semester. But my luck seems to be slipping. Hey, now that's not a nice way to greet your brother. They're brothers? Another loud gasp was heard. This time it came from Daryl. He points at Geo quite a bit dramatically. You have a brother, Geo. Oh great, another one. That's big brother to you. Everyone's attention was now on the three of them. Brittany seemingly amused by Geo's newfound dilemma. Crow just chuckled while Jess was surprised as well. Oh, right. Uh, Hugo started finally letting go of Geo. The said male cursing under his breath as he composed himself and fixed his now ruffled hair as he walked towards you. We're actually going to go up to the rooftop for lunch today. We're hoping that you'd like to come with us. He says, now standing. Sol looks at you with anticipation. You? Yeah, so I'm pretty sure if you join Sol and Hugo, it's just the same as the first route that we took, so I'll just stay with the group this time. He gives Hugo a sad smile. I'd love to join you, Hugo, but I'd like to stay with them for today if that's alright. Hugo gives you a sad smile of his own before nodding his head, failing to notice how one of Sol's eyes twitched. Oh, that's alright, Uni, but hit us up if you ever want to hang out, okay? He nodded, and he gave you an enthusiastic thumbs up. Before you could turn to Sol to apologize to him too, Hugo quickly dragged him away. You notice how his strides were slow and hesitant as Hugo drags him off. You shrug before returning to Crow and the rest of the group. The school, surprisingly, has a public garden with a greenhouse just a few steps ahead. Multiple courses would go and plant needed flora and necessities, or sometimes a school nurse would spend her time leisuring around and embracing the fresh air. You happen to be a volunteer in taking care of the garden, along with the plants in the greenhouse. Hence explaining how you got a set of keys. It just reminds you of your home. Brittany went ahead and laid down a large picnic blanket under a large tree in the middle of the field. She set down a basket and started taking out some contents. Daryl and Jess followed along while Geo leaned against the bark of the tree. Let's see what we have here. Ow! Not. Yet. Brittany slapped Daryl's hand away from the basket before he could raid the whole thing, making him wince and pout. Calm your ass down, you'll have your turn. At this point, I'll have to charge you every time y'all hit me. Are you some sort of masochist? Daryl gave Gio a side eye. Brittany shook her head while Jess just giggled. It was a cute little get together that Brittany planned last night. She wanted to make a few sandwiches, so she prepared lots of varieties. On the blanket are a few Tupperwares with some of the sandwiches inside while the rest were eaten. Everyone got their fair share already, but now everybody's just minding their own business. Daryl's having the time of his life with two sandwiches on both hands. Brittany and Jess are talking. Gia's a bit further away from the group, leaning on the bark of the tree, seemingly lost in thought, and Crow is nowhere to be seen. I want to do a picnic. I'm going to speak to Gio. You're quite hesitant to approach Gio at first. You always saw him as someone quite intimidating. More intimidating than Brittany. Oh, they all get CGs this time. Look at them. It's probably the way he carries himself. His towering height isn't helping either, and it seems you've been staring at him for too long. He stops chewing on his sandwich as his gaze meets yours and you shiver. What do you want? I have questions. Hurry up and spit it out. You and Hugo know each other. His eye twitched. You think you hear the sensitive nerve? I don't and I don't want to associate myself with him. Whatever he said back in the hallway, forget about it. Is that so? If that's all you have to say to me, then leave. But wait! Actually, I'm curious as to why. 
Why do you hang out with us? I mean, I don't mean it in a bad way, it's just that I'm curious. You didn't seem the type to... His piercing gaze made your voice die down, and you curse under your breath. Fuck, I think this is it for me. I get it, but you wouldn't understand. Leave me to my devices. Now, he demanded before wrapping the half-eaten sandwich he had in his hand before throwing it towards you. You caught it, nearly losing your balance. I give that to Daryl. I just lost my appetite. You're very nice. Jira then crossed his arms and looks up at the sky. The chilly autumn breeze passing by him, making his long hair sway along with his washed earrings. You take a look at the wrapped half-eaten sandwich in your hand. I guess I'll never know. You sigh. Speak to... Uh, speak to... Daryl seems to be the least busy out of everyone. He approaches sitting figure as he took a seat in front of him. One sandwich gone from his hand as he munched on the other on his own hand. He notices you and stops eating, tucking away the sandwich and placing all of his attention onto you. Yeah. He took out the half-eaten sandwich you got from Gio and handed it to him. He tilts his head to the side. You can't finish yours? It's from Gio. Really now? Not gonna lie, that's quite uncharacteristic of him. Usually he'd either finish it or throw it away. Not that I'm complaining though. Thanks, Eddie. Daryl thanked you with a smile and took the half-eaten sandwich from your hand before tucking it away. Oh, cute. I love being able to interact with the group. You got something to ask me, Eddie? About Gio. What are your thoughts on Gio? Daryl smiled as he leaned a bit forward. Now Gio is my favourite guy, even if he is a bit of a meanie at times. What makes you stick to him? Isn't he mean to you like you said? Daryl's smile brightened and his eyes went soft. He side-eyed the male by the tree who had his arms crossed. Gio's attention was somewhere else. People are scared of him. It's probably because of his background. What about it? The thing is, no one really knows what his family does other than the fact that they're super rich and that they're highly involved with the founder of the city. People have seen him with his bodyguards. All rugged and tall and very intimidating. Wait, but if him and Hugo are rich, why are they not at the rich school? Heck, I even saw him with a huge katana on their back. He shivered. Clearly, you don't want to deal with them. But what makes you not scared, Daryl? I mean, you clearly know what his family and himself are capable of. You see, Yinny, I'm not really scared of him. On the outside, he's all stubborn and cruel. But on the inside, he's a really nice guy. Think of him like a... He pursed his lips, thinking for a bit. He's like a stubborn cat. He glanced back at Gia one more time. You are seeing the cat ears on the tail, all right, now that you think about it. With this vision based on Daryl's de declaration, Gia does not seem quite intimidating anymore. How cute. Then you hear a soft sigh from Daryl. You turn your attention to him, an elbow on his leg as he held his face in his hand. Which begs me to wonder how he ended up being in the lower class with us. The low class? How do we have things like that? Oh, you don't know about the hierarchy, Eni. You shook your head no. And Daryl scratched the back of his head. Oh, damn, well, you know, almost everyone knows about it. But I don't blame you since no one really likes bringing that type of subject up. I think either Crow or Jess would like to explain it to you. Just not Brittany. She still gets riled up when it's mentioned. You nod an understanding, and Daryl gives you a smile. Anyway, you got something to ask me, Yinny? What do you think of Jess? At the mention of Jess's name, Daryl's whole face turned red as he started sweating. Ooh. Ooh, what about her? I don't know. I'd like you to tell me. What do you think about her? Daryl's cheeks just keep getting redder and redder. For a moment, his gaze turns to where Jess and Brittany were. He sighs as he looks away. Jess is the sweetest human being I've ever met. Oh? Uh, but don't tell anyone. I trust you with this because Crow trusts you, okay? Alright, alright. I don't know what the big fuss is, but I promise I won't tell. You raise your hand and surrender. The taller jock deflated on his spot, his shoulders down along with his mood. But, yeah. She's sweet. She's pretty. She's cute. While someone make fun of me, she's always there to give me a pat on the back. He groans, doubling over. His expression. Seems like he just wants to throw up as he buries his face in his hands. But I doubt she likes me back. You tilt your head, wondering why he thinks this way. What makes you say that? The way she looks at Brittany. Don't you think that's a look of someone in love? At that, your eyes widen in surprise. You quickly turn your head to where the two girls were. The eyes behind the transparent frame looked like fresh citrus oranges in the summer. They were bright. And they were fresh for the picking for Brittany. I know because that's the same look I gave to her when I first met her. Aww. And it's the same look I see on Crow when he looks at you. Oh. <laughs> he tore the loose strand from his bangs and he looked away from the two girls and focused on your surprise figure. I hate it, but I love seeing that look on her face. I wish it was on me though. But I'm sorry, Daryl. <laughs> he chuckled a bit. It's alright. Maybe one day I'll confess just to get it off my chest. All I want is to see her happy. Daryl is so sweet. Even if it's not with me. Oh my god. Oh. Anyway, enough of the sad shit, Yinny. Oh my goodness. You got something to ask me, Yinny? Uh, about Brittany. Dale gives you a proud smile. Brittany? She's my first friend back when I was new to the football team. You'd be surprised that she used to be in the cheer squad despite her being quite introverted. 
She was. There was bright smile softened. A small gloomy look in it. She was trying so hard to hide it but was failing. Yeah. She quit right after the game's big frat party two years ago. That party was something else since the higher classes were also part of it. The following day she suddenly quit. I don't know why though. Not quite worth thinking about the past anyway. You got something to ask? What do you think about Crow? At the mention of the blue-eyed friend of his, Daryl gives you a toothy grin as he wiggles his eyebrows. You want jits on your little crushy, don't you, Guinea? Sh shut up, I just admire him, okay? And Daryl laughed and stopped teasing, saving you from further embarrassment. Crow is quite an individual. All I know is that he's the son of a very successful businesswoman in the city. Wait, then why is he at this school then? Though, I heard he doesn't have a great relationship with his family. Ah, that's probably why. What makes you say that? Daryl thought for a bit, but, but judging from his expression, he couldn't understand why either. I don't know either, Yinny. You should ask Crow for that one if you want to learn more. I see. Don't worry, Yinny. I'm sure he'll do anything that you ask for. He gives you a playful wink and you roll your eyes, but give him a smile nonetheless. Thank you for answering my questions, Daryl. Anytime, Yinny, you're one of us now, so open up a little. Let's ask about Daryl. I'd like to know more about you, Daryl. Daryl rubbed the back of his head, quite embarrassed you thought about him. Well, aren't you a flatterer? Ahem. <clears throat> Where should I start? He thought for a while, his legs crossed while you waited for him, as he pondered. Well, I am the ace of the football club. I hate my coach, but don't tell him that. Mm. I love food. Like lots. My most favourite would be sweets. If you ever get any on you, smuggle me some, will ya? He says with a wink and a nod. Other than that, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Let's talk to Jess. Oh, she's so cute. Look at her. Jess is admiring a few orange leaves slowly falling from the tree. The slow descent of a leaf catches her attention before gracefully catching it with her delicate fingers. She notices you're approaching her and she drops the leaf before giving her full attention to you. Y yes, Yinny? What, what seems to be the problem? Oh, there's nothing actually. I just wanted to talk to you and ask a few questions. Th then by all means, go ahead. I'll try my best to answer them. You have questions to ask me, Yinny? What's on Geo? Jess's shoulders start shaking at the mention of the tall and stoic individual. I hate to be one of those people, but he actually scares me. Have you seen how capable he is with his bow and arrow? No, is he actually that good? I only know that he's from the archery club. Oh, then you should definitely attend the sports festival next year. Gio is going to compete and the higher classes will be there to, to determine if the students are worth bringing up. Another shiver went up to her spine. She wrapped her arms around herself. A bad memory crosses her mind. But whenever that happens, Gio seems to somehow miss his target and nearly hit someone with his arrow. Huh, the fuck? Thankfully, it only cut the guy's hair and nothing else. He got disqualified sadly, but that was enough for me not to mess with him. Why is he not in jail? You try to rack up your brain for a reason why he's in this school and not behind bars, but Jess cuts you up before you could think any further. E enough of that. At the mention of Daryl, Jess's face went bright. This is probably the first time you've seen her smile without shaking like a lost lamb. Oh, Daryl, he's an amazing friend. He keeps me safe and I owe it to him quite a lot. Though I do feel bad for him most of the time. Brittany and Jude tease him way too much. And Jess chuckled, looking at the jock sitting under the tree before turning back up to you. He's a funny guy. I remember back then when I made the mistake of giving him a bowl filled with candy last year's Halloween. He did tell me he likes sweets. Why? <laughs> What's wrong with giving him candy? Well, he gets sugar rush pretty quickly and gets super hyper. Brittany tried so hard in calming him down. Can you imagine a six foot tall jockey running around like a playful puppy? I bet Brittany didn't have a fun time. Just nodded with a close smile at you. Okay, thoughts on Brittany. What do you think about Brittany? Upon mentioning the Gyaru's name, Brittany's head turned to the both of you. She didn't say anything but raised a brow as she tilted her head to the side. You called for me? N nothing, Brit. Jess quickly shooed her best friend away. Brittany shrugged before continuing on with her business. Jess looks out a sigh of relief as a small tint of red raises to her cheeks. Jess looks down at the skirt, fiddling with her pink wristband as her heartbeat quickens. Brit, she's my best friend. My very best friend. I would do anything to see her happy again. She pushed back her glasses and looked at you. And there you saw the sparkles. Her smile is soft and you can tell. Jess, do you like Brit? She was hesitant before looking down, nodding as she did so, still fiddling with her pink wristband. Promise not to tell. I promise. Thank you, Uni. This will just be between the two of us. Besides, she gives you a big smile. I'll keep your oh-so-secret crush towards Crow. A secret too. She giggles at your surprised look at the mention of Crow. You rub the back of your head as you pout. Have you seen Crow? Jess's eyebrows furrow as she shakes her head. I don't think I know where Crow is. Maybe she'll ask Brittany. Maybe she knows. You thank her. It was wonderful talking to you, Uni. You should hang out with us more. Brittany was minding her own business, seemingly tapping away on her phone. You were kind of shy to come any closer to her, but before you could turn and leave, she called out to you. She must have seen you from the corner of her eye. Oi, Yinny, come here. Don't be a stranger now, you clearly want to talk. Let me guess, well the sandwich is great. 
They're wonderful, Brittany. She smiles at your response. I'm glad you like them, Uni. Anyway, enough of my sandwiches. Oh, she's so hot. What the fuck? She's so pretty. You something to tell me? Thoughts on Jess? Upon hearing her name, Jess's head turned to where you both were. Brittany dismissed her, telling it's nothing for her to worry about before turning back to you. Jessie, she's my best friend. She smiled as she looked down the orange band on her wrist. My very best friend. When no one else was there to help me, she was there. You'd be surprised at how confident and loud she is when she's mad. Brittany chuckled a bit as if reminiscing a fond memory. I owe it all to her for bringing me back up during those dark times. But enough of the past. What are your thoughts on Geo? Brittany raises an eyebrow. Don't tell me you got the hots for him. N nothing of the sort. What makes you think that? I mean, I wouldn't blame you if you do. If you can see how his locker is often filled with multiple love letters and gifts from various people, then I wouldn't be surprised. He's that popular. A loner like him, you'd be surprised. Tall, mysterious, and dangerous, everyone just flocks to him like birds. The people are scared to even get close to him, so the next best thing they can do is send him gifts. They never succeed, though. Is he somehow overwhelmed by the attention? Not really overwhelmed, more like he's uninterested. He either doesn't read the letters and tosses them, or... Or he burns them. He burns them? That's so mean, and a waste of gifts, too. Brittany just laughed, her shoulders shaking. <laughs> That's Gio to you. How do you know all of this? Brittany giggled before giving you a wink as she pressed a manicured finger on her lips as if to shush you. I know a lot of secrets. Anyway, not on Daryl. Brittany just chuckled. <laughs> you mean that meathead? He's an idiot. She says that with a smile and then she sighs. Shakes her head at the thought of the tall jock. He's an idiot, but he's a smart idiot. I'll give him that. He's like a brother to me. It just baffles me how he barely has any friends. How the school fails us. She shakes the idea before turning her attention back to you. Have you seen Crow? Crow? I think I saw him go deeper in the gardens, Brittany said with a raise of her brows. Let me guess. You want to finally confess your undying feelings for him? Well, what makes you think that? Well, I'm not sure who's denser, him or you. Whatever, if you need him, he's probably in the greenhouse. Brittany gives you a thumbs up, mouthing of good luck. As if I'm confessing, you thought with a pout. Brittany just gives you a teasing smirk. Anyway, enough of that. You have something to tell me? Uh, nothing else. Brittany gives you a nod before standing up from the ground. She stretches her limbs, letting out a few satisfying puffs. She places a hand on her hip. I'll be cleaning a bit. Talk to you later, Uni. You don't want any help? No oh, thanks. I appreciate the thought, though. You nod as you stood up, leaving Brittany to attend to her own devices. Alright, let's look for Crow. You pretty much talked with everyone here, and they all seem to be busying themselves. You look around the garden before moving in deeper to the Red Autumn Wonderland. As you kept moving forward, you are greeted by the greenhouse. Through the transparent glass, you spot a familiar head of brown. You went inside the greenhouse and see Crow go through each plant and flower, analyzing each delicate leaf and petal. Noticing he's not alone, he turns to where you are and smiles. Oh, there you are, Uni. What brings you here? I would say the same thing to you. Well, I haven't really explored this place properly, so why not take that chance? You've never been here. Crow shakes his head. Never got the time to visit. Crow chuckles. You meet his gaze and he gives you a soft smile. His gaze lingers for a bit before going around. He then found something that catches his attention. Now, this is a pretty looking flora. What do you think it is? You look at the brush of flowers filled with purple flowers. Their petals thin as it showcases the full bloom. This is a passion flower. Fascinating. Tell me more about it. Well, it's a climbing vine plant. Usually its colors are purple or white. Once flowers bloom, passion fruits will bear itself. Usually a volunteer would come and harvest the fruits. That sounds interesting, innit? But that's a scientific way to describe this flower. How about its meaning? You tilt your head to the side. But what do you mean? How do I say this? Places a hand under his chin. In astrology, each star has a meaning behind it. The same goes with gemstones like your birthstone. Flowers have those as well, correct? Ah, huh, I never really thought of it. Pro gives you a cheeky smile. It's interesting. Passion flowers symbolize hope and growth. I love seeing the hopeful looks on people. He says as he looks down at the flowers before you both. Hope. Something the city needs. I want to get rid of the hierarchy. Oh my god, don't- You know it's one thing that can just make me head over heels for a man? He comes in and he's like, I want to dismantle the government and society and remake it to be fairer for all. He's like, I want to get rid of the ruling class. And I'm just like, yep, that's me. I'm here. Hello. Weird way to propose, but yes. Daryl mentioned something about that. Actually, everyone did. But how come I've never heard of it? What's it about? I never got to explain it to you, huh? I guess now's the perfect time since they're quite active in interacting with us in the lower class again. He looks out. Our school, Olympias University, has two buildings with two different classes. One is where we are at the moment, the lower class, while around the northern part of the city is where the higher classes are. There, education is ten times better, the facilities are better, and the students 
I'm way out of our league. He hesitates a bit in voicing his thoughts on the students of the higher class. Though I highly doubt that. He added, his eyes narrowed. Calling at the lower class is kind of low, in my opinion. I call them villagers, humble people. They're either really kind or too busy to bother. There was a hint of hesitation in his voice. Well, not all. Failed students in the higher class often end up here with us. And well, they don't really take it well, which explains the bullying situation. Poe's brows slanted downwards disgusted by the idea. The fact that he can't do anything is irritating him. How come no one's tried to file a report or anything? People tried. I tried. We tried. But unless you either have money or a higher reputation, heck, even both, they'll never even bother to listen. Poe sighs, which is why some students try their hardest to get up the ranks, to be part of the higher class. All that, just to be respected. Poe didn't say anything to you but a nod. The hierarchy. Poe lets out a sad laugh. The system is kind of a, if you feel it, you feel it thing. You don't really feel it, much less see it, unless you've been at its mercy. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, uni. You'll never know who's the next victim. A soft, sad smile made its way onto his face, which is why I strive to protect you. You're left to your own thoughts regarding what Crow told you about the hierarchy. This probably explains the bullying and how the school is handled. Your position in the city is just a second priority. Heck, maybe not even a priority at all. That means if I ever want to keep my family's farm up, I have to make it up there. Pro nodded before continuing. Once you're up there, you'll have a better life. You'll be respected. You'll be rich. People would do as you tell them. That's messed up. Did people ever protest? Pro, however, did not answer, as if scared that someone would hear him. He remained quiet, only giving you a look that probably says that things did not go well. You refuse to ask for more information. That reminds me, Yinny. Pro starts. You never told me as to why or how you chose this university. Your family owns farms, correct? You beat your lip as you thought of home. We do, but I wouldn't say we're doing well. I'm sorry to hear that. It, it's okay, really. It's my burden to carry, and not yours. And I'm gonna work hard for it. Anything. I'll do anything. Okay, we've already seen this bit before. So I'm just gonna skip it. Your heart aches as you stare back into Crow's own azure eyes. Are you alright there, Yuni? You zoned out for a bit. If I get to be part of the higher class, then I can have a better chance of life, right? Crow was surprised at your sudden enthusiasm, but nodded regardless. That's right. And you give Crow a reassuring smile, you clench your fist. Then I'll work hard to show those higher classes that I am worth their time. Crow chuckles and nods. You know that he's got your back. Then Crow raises his hand and tucks a loose strand behind your ear. You sense him placing something soft and you reach to touch what felt like petals. Oh, he's so sweet. He's so cute. So in love with him. God, I love me a man that'll just agree to dismantle the hierarchy. That looks good on you. But what is it? Crow then leads you to a nearby pond. And you look and see a reflection. On your hair is a red carnation. Oh, I didn't know carnations grow here. Crow only chuckled, fixing the flower on your hair. Then Crow was silent, basking in your presence. His expression then went dim as if something was bothering him. You took notice, of course. Is something the matter, Crow? He blinks once, twice. He averts his gaze, a bit hesitant to speak up. He grabbed his hand to reassure him that it's fine. He sighs as he speaks. Your friend. My friend? The tall one in green. Oh? What are your thoughts on him? So, he's... He's cute. Crow chuckles at your comment, though it feels a bit strained. Is that so? Then tell me, Yuni. Do you like him? But what makes you say that? He did say he's cute. I just think he's cute, that's all. Crow stops his teasing, but the dullness in his eyes remained. Crow looks around for a while, basking in the various beauties of flora. What do you think carnation means? You tilt your head, making sure that said flower doesn't fall from your hand as Crow continued on with his talk. Passion flower means hope, while carnations mean... Hmm. I couldn't seem to remember. What do you think it means, Yuni? You thought for a while knowing some carnations are bound to be found in bouquets. Well, it has to be something romantic. They're often a perfect gift to family and loved ones. Is that so? I might have to look up what it means then. Your eyes meet his, and for a moment, his gaze lingers. Were his eyes always this blue? You never noticed before. The way his lashes flutter and touch his cheeks when he blinks. His plump lips are always glistening whenever sunlight hits him. His eyes went half-lidded as he leaned closer and closer. As if in a trance, your eyes slowly start to close. Oh my god, we get to kiss him. Lean in. As if you lose control of your body and it starts moving on its own. You lean closer as well. Your eyes now close, feeling his breath near your own lips as he draws closer. Crow, we better get going before. Of course, Brittany. Brittany, no! <laughs> no! Oh, Brittany fucked me. Your eyes popped open and you quickly backed away. Crow backed away as well. As he waved to Brittany. Brittany just raised a brow at the both of you before shrugging it off and leaving the greenhouse. Crow sighed, seemingly disappointed, before giving you his hand for you to take. We should get going. He pouted at the moment ruined before accepting his extended hand, and left the greenhouse with Crow. You and the rest of the group got back inside the campus. 
Everyone already went to their respective classes. I'm going to head back first. I'll see you in class, Ini. Uh, of course. Ro didn't walk away just yet. He stood there for a while, contemplating something, before shaking his head and walking away. A tint of red touching the tips of his ears as he walked. Just by the corner of your eye, you spot two familiar-looking individuals. It was Sol and Hugo. Sol notices you first and went to your noticeable skip in his steps. Yuni. Hey Sol. Hey Hugo. Are you both heading to your next class? Hugo laughed a hand on his chest as if he told him a very funny joke. Actually, I have a better idea. Let's skip class. Skip class? Yeah, we found Sol here as we meaning to ask you out. <laughs> Sol gave Hugo a punch in his ribs, making the shorter male choke on the words he was supposed to say as he doubled over and clutches his stomach. Let's ditch. Hugo just gave him a glare. Sol ignored him as he anticipates your answer. Mm, okay, I think, yeah, I think this takes us back to the diverging point before. Let me just check. Yeah, it's just like the arcade again. Let me check to see what happens when we stay with the group instead. They seem pretty busy. Putting away whatever idea you had, you turn your attention back to your group of friends. So, cafeteria? Everyone cringed, not hiding their discomfort. No, hell no. Not <laughs> there. I, I'd rather not, Daryl. How about somewhere else? Hugh just face palmed. What do you suggest? Daryl flailed his arms. He thought for a moment as you looked outside. Bushes with a few flowers sprouting caught your attention as it blends well with the red and yellows of autumn. Garden. That's right, I know a place. Have you guys been to the school's garden behind? Oh right, the botanical garden used by the pharmacy course. That could be a good idea. This is a place perfect for our little picnic today. But isn't that place locked? Just peeked in, you smirked before pulling out a set of keys from your belt and dangling them. I just happen to be a volunteer gardener. Extra credit. I didn't know you'd garden, Yuni. Everyone's gaze is on you. Curiosity in their eyes, even Jiyu's eyebrows raised a bit. Everyone's up for Crow. Well, she grew up on a farm. And now everyone's attention was on Crow, catching him off guard by the looks they're giving him. Of course you know, lover boy. Look at Brittany's face. Brittany whispers under her breath as she rolls her eyes. Jess just giggled. Crow's cheeks burned red from Brittany's comment. You run the back of your head. You never really got the chance to properly introduce yourself to them, huh? Considering you just started hanging out with them a week and a half ago, these past months you've only been hanging out with Crow the most. He was your only friend. Maybe this is your time to get to know them, and then with you. Okay, so this I think just goes back to the picnic. Yeah. So this is just the picnic scene, which we've already seen. I'm gonna go and just explore around because we're still missing the CG. Okay. Alright, so this is after your almost kiss with Crow. And you choose not to skip class. And Sol is walking you to class. Just then, your classroom's door opened and there stood Crow. His eyes perked upon seeing you. There you are, you need just some time for the next class too. As he notices Sol's presence beside you, his eyebrows perk and he gave the tall student a soft smile. And hello there, Sol. What brings you here? Sol, however, was silent. His gaze dark before responding. Just a scorning Yinny. That's really sweet of you to do, Sol. Crow didn't mind the mail any longer before returning his attention back to you. You should probably get in. The professor is coming any time now. Oh, right. Thank you again, Sol, for coming with me. You entered your classroom along with Crow, failing to see Sol's ever-darkening gaze as his fist clenched, drawing blood. He stares at the door, moving aside as he leans on the wall right beside the door. Sol looks down to stare at his palm. Sol's right eye twitched, looking at the broken skin on his palm. The light in his eye is gone. He raises his palm and licks the blood away. Oh boy. Ichabod, it's always been you. What the heck? Oh my god. I should have dealt with him years ago. Sol? Wait, Sol's been watching us for years. So this whole thing with Crow is the same. Let's see if it changes the ending scene. Because I want to see if anything happens. Okay, so the scene is the same. Like, same as if you spend your day with um, Crow instead of him. Alright, that's all of the CGs. And I think we've covered pretty much like most, if not all, of the routes and endings for this one. Thank you so much for sitting with me as I play through day two of The Kid at the Back. I love this game so much. Fantasia is incredibly sweet and a wonderful, wonderful dev. I would also like to point out that this game is 18 plus. There is a spicy scene version, which does cost $5 as well. Uh, the base game itself, however, is free. The spicy scenes don't, you know, take away from the game if you don't have them. But if you would like to experience them, I would highly recommend tipping Fantasia the $5 on itch because they are quite well written. Thank you so much for experiencing the story with me. I cannot wait for day 3 and future updates of this game. I absolutely adore Sol. I really love Crow as well. It's also really interesting getting to find out that Geo and um, Hugo were brothers and that Hugo straight up just killed a man in one ending and seems to have 
a bit of a pass and experience with disposing of bodies. Anyway, thank you so much again for watching. If you guys like this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on future ones. If you guys want to hang out outside of streams, uh, feel free to join the Discord down in the description box below. Or come hang out over on Twitch with me and my lovely community. I stream four times a week and would love to see you guys there. But that's all for now. Until next time, take care.